It was just a fun, happy discovery. We, we went to this thrift store so much. It was just cool to find something like of value like that. Immediately I was like, what? Valuables envelope? What could it be? James and I had just started dating back in Washington, D.C. And uh, one of my uh, favorite things to do is go thrift shopping. And I was going through a real suitcase kick. And we found a few that day. And since we were courting, James was uh, a gentleman and paid for my thrifted suitcases. I took them home. This is the, the suitcase Robert Rowland is on it. A lot of suitcases have names on them. But I opened it up and um, felt around in the pockets and found the ring. It says, May Warner, received by Carolyn Somebody, March 24th, 1983 and looked at it and thought, is this a sign? <laughs> I remember putting it on my finger and taking a picture and thinking, should I send this or is that creepy? Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if I sent it or not. Yeah, I think you sent it. Uh. I should also add that uh, James and I are now married. So it was a sign. <laughs> yeah, it worked out. It was leaning in the right direction. <laughs> so I was like, should I keep it? Should I try and find? May Warner, what should I do with this? And eventually decided that it should go home. I have a really sweet um, feeling about this person I know, I know nothing about. <laughs> I just picture a Donna Reed show scenario, you know, <laughs> black and white, nice 50s hair. So tried to find May Warner, spent about maybe 15 minutes Googling, and then I was like, no. I can't. This is hard. When we moved to Portland and I, you know, saw Samantha's story, there was something at the end maybe that said, like, found a ring? You know, reach out. I had three names to work with. May Warner, but there are so many May Warners who have lived in Maryland or Virginia or the D.C. area. The name on the outside of the suitcase was Robert Rowland, but there are so many Robert Rowlands. After months of tracing various Mays and Roberts, I decided to try and find Carolyn. There was a Carolyn Danick who died in a car crash in 1985. Her death certificate listed her job. She worked at a nursing home and she lived in Loudoun County, Virginia. Based on that, I was able to pinpoint a May Warner who had lived in that same county and would have been the right age to be in a nursing home in around 1983. May died in 1989. Her death certificate had information provided by a Jeannie A. Rowland, who was married to a Robert Rowland. Both of the Rowlands had died, but I found Robert's obituary, which listed his surviving children. Well, when I first saw it, I, you know, you automatically go to scam. Uh -huh. And so when I was first reading it, I'm like, well, you know, what scam is this? <laughs> It wasn't fancy or big. They never had a lot of money. You know, they, you know, had a huge garden up in Fargo, North Dakota, where they lived most of their lives. He read water meters for the gas company, and she was a housewife. When they could no longer live alone, then they came down to Virginia to live with my parents. My grandfather passed away, and then my grandmother went to the nursing home because she had not dementia, but she was in her 90s. We moved my parents in with, with my sister, and she remembers taking some of the old suitcases to one of the thrift stores. Before we mailed the ring back to Susie, I took it to a local jeweler to get it cleaned and appraised. I'm David Margulis. I'm the owner of Margulis Jewelers. The center diamond in this ring comes from the period of 1917. It's an old European cut diamond that you can date by the fastening on the center diamond. However, the original ring might have worn out from 1917, and then this diamond was reset into this ring mounting. The style of this mounting comes from the 1960s. It looks like it's a quarter of a carat or less. So it was a modest sized diamond. A gold ring from 1917 worn every day could last 30 years, 40, but it's really a stretch to make it to 50. As a used ring, it would probably sell in the five to $600 area as a used ring. 
so I just got the ring back. It's been cleaned, it looks really great, and I am going to mail it to Susie in North Carolina. So I received this envelope in the mail from Samantha. Here's the ring. It's, it's a modest little diamond engagement ring that belonged to my grandmother who lived in Fargo, North Dakota. So thank you so much for returning this to us. It obviously has sentimental value and um, it's a cute little ring and it might even, might even be nice for a pinky ring. Anyway, thank you very much. My ring someday um, I hope goes to my daughter and if I lose it I just really hope that someone would do as much work as you know you've done and hang on to it so that it gets back to the family. One of the things that are so important to people when they inherit or it's a family jewel is that they can remember their father wearing it or their mother wearing it or their grandmother wearing it and subconsciously it builds a really important connection between that person and what they saw them wearing day in and day out. And so that's why these rings that are found are so significant.